There are some moments in history, just the right time and the right place, when incredible things happen. Instances when ingenuity, integrity and invention come together to create definitive moments that leave their legacies on time. The printmaking history of 19th century Bengal is one such story. A time of rapid invention and continuous change when new techniques, new machines and new artistic methods were being invented like never before, each leading the way for the next one. Today, we pause two such moments and look at two works that the periods produced. They share the same provenance, the same image source and perhaps a similar patron group. One was printed at a little known press called the Oriental Art Studio in Kolkata now stored in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and the other by the equally unheard of printers from under the banyan tree, now in the collection of Map Bangalore. This print by the Oriental Art Studio shows Radha and Krishna standing on a lotus. Their bodies are intertwined. Notice how both of them have their hands on the flute. They're accompanied by two attendants standing on either side holding fly whisks. In early 19th century Kolkata, a group of ingenious local men set up a bookmaking and printing industry. Today, it is simply known as the Bortola. Bortola in Bengali means under the banyan, and the industry was named after a now lost banyan tree under which the first generation of printers are believed to have set shop. In this image, we see the adaptation of a timeless icon, one that has been used and reused in traditions across the country, the image of Radha and Krishna. The artist here has gone a step further to also add Krishna's brother Balaram and his consort Revati. This is imagery that has a very long history in Indian art. We can find it in many, many works of Indian painting, in Pichwais and in other settings. And some of the elements we see very specifically reusing earlier techniques from Indian painting, for example, so that the representation of the pearls worn by Radha and Krishna are made with tiny dots of white paint and that's something that you see almost exactly the same being done by Rajput painters. This particular work is a relief print from a metal plate. A copper plate would have been engraved and mounted on a wood block to be ready for printing. Traces of screws used to mount the metal plate to a wood support are visible at the corners of the print. On the side, the artist has very charmingly attempted to integrate the screw mark in the composition by putting it in the center of a flower. Another innovative element is the use of lithography. In the 19th and early 20th century, India was at the center of a great expansion in lithographic printing. This print was made by a small press called Oriental Art Studio, and to my knowledge, no other print by this studio has been recorded. From its style, we can connect it to a group of early, small Calcutta presses that were active in the 1880s. At that time, Calcutta had a thriving lithography industry, and the artists and printmakers there were rapidly innovating, not only in terms of imagery and style, but also technique. Very rapidly, they moved from one-color lithographs to using a mix of color printing and hand coloring, and then on to color lithographs printed from multiple stones, and finally to photomechanical printing, also called photo offset printing. Exposed to the new European prints entering the port of Kolkata, the Bortola artist began to include Western components into his art. Scalloped curtains and Corinthian pillars often framed many interiors, while Palladian mansions are peopled by Hindu gods and goddesses. The European influence in this image is visible in the addition of the Corinthian arches and the hint of a pediment that tops the composition. One can also notice half-human, half-snake-like cherubic figures with wings, although here they seem to be indianized with bindis and short choli-like blouses. We can also find some elements in the print that are strikingly new. Artistic techniques and values in India have been changing rapidly in the late 19th century. And one innovation in art was the selective adoption of Western techniques of naturalistic representation. When applied to images of Hindu gods, the gods came to seem more real, human, and immediate than ever before. The depiction of the colors and the folds of clothing, the color of the women's skin, and the fine detail in the leaves of the tree all come together to make this print seem almost like a portrait of a real loving couple. The Bortola material was extremely popular among the lower middle class and semi-educated population of Kolkata. 
Increase in demand necessitated quicker production and in ever-growing numbers. A close examination of this Radha Krishna print shows such an instance where the artist had had to work very, very fast. The print was made using a metal plate and quickly colored using cotton swabs. This print was created in three stages. First, it was printed in black. Second, color was added using a printing technique known today as a rainbow roll. That is how they created the sky with its rainbow colors that fade into each other. Finally, the rest of the color was added by hand. So, if we want to locate this print on the path from simple lithography to color printing, we can think of this one as sort of poised at the transition between hand-colored printing, like the print in the map collection, and full color printing. The Bortala print, however, was hand-colored at one go, perhaps using temporary brushes made of cotton rolled on top of sticks. This is noticeable in the colors spilling out of the outlines and merging with each other. This artwork and others like it also lead us into understanding who the consumers of the Bortola prints were. Those who could not afford expensive paintings or even colored prints of deities for their home shrines and yet wished for an image that looked something like an expensive painting or a colorful print. I hope you have enjoyed this journey into a print in the collection of the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. These two artworks may have been produced at two distinct moments in the printmaking history of India, but together they help us understand the socio-cultural context and popular opinions that shaped the visual aesthetics of 19th century Kolkata.